Want to achieve network marketing success? Then you're in the right company. Hello, and welcome to Leave Nothing to Chance, hosted by networking marketing giant, John Solider. Learn everything you need to know about the network marketing space from somebody who's actually done it. Join us every week for front row seats as we feature some of the finest and most successful personalities in network marketing. Leave nothing to chance. Join us now. Well, it is my pleasure to welcome a dynamic couple, tremendously successful in our industry, uh, living in Florida now, spend some of their time up in Canada, and that is Tammy Sellers and Christian Gingras, also known as Christian Gingras, okay, depending on English or French, and uh, we were just laughing about that. It was like good cop, bad cop, right, Christian? <laughs> 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 so, some people saw that move. Anyway, welcome to the show, guys. I appreciate you being here, and uh uh, we'll start off. Um, I'm going to ask some questions. Uh, for example, how long have you guys been in the industry? You know, it's it's interesting. We're looking, my wife and I were actually asking ourselves this because years are just going by so quickly right now. But we've been full time, I would say, 23 years plus. It's re- flirting with 25 years now. Yeah. Great. Great. It's a lo- long time. And, and, you know, I know anybody who has been as successful as you have been and also have been around the industry as long as you both have, that you're students of the self-development movement. What was the first book that, that you read? And um, we can go in no particular order, boys first, girls second, girls first, boys second, you guys figure that you out. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so your first year in network marketing, I think that's the big one for, for people who've been around as long as us and with Yar- Mark Yarnell, that's one of the big ones. Um, Myself, uh, personally, the one that made, I think, the most impact at the beginning was to uh, feel, feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm. Uh, you know, often when we start in this profession, we have all of these fears going through our mind, which prevents us to take the actions to move forward. And uh, yeah, I was grateful because one of uh, my associates, the one that introduced me to this book, and once I realized that I mean, fear is not going to go away. You just got to face it. And what you realize is that in the process, whatever you created in your mind never really happens. So it really helped me move forward in breaking fears over the years of doing many things. Yeah. I think you get fear at every level you grow up, right? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I remember Tammy and I, I mean, we met in the industry. It's really interesting. I guess we'll come back to that a little later. But um, yeah, the very first book I was exposed to was also a first year in network marketing with Mark Yonell. And uh, I think it's a, it's a classic for everybody. Um, and I think it also you know, went through the test of time because even though things has evolved, especially today, the way we do business compared to even two years ago, things are, have evolved quite a bit, but the concepts are still there. Uh, so I remember that being the foundation, but also I'm a very observant person. Uh, one thing that Tammy and I, I can testify is we've never missed an event. I mean, every single event, company, team driven. At the time, we were just following and, and uh, not leading, but following to learn. I was very observant and I was following and duplicating and mimicking what the successful people were doing. Uh, so it's a combination of what you get in the books, but also real life activity. Another book that I can tell you that was absolutely instrumental is How to Win Friends and Influence People with uh, Carl Carnegie. I mean, this uh, this book is absolutely brilliant. I remember when I started touring in Mexico. Remember that, Tammy? I mean, that book was with me everywhere. In fact, I remember at one point I left it in one of the hotels. I kind of freaked out. So I don't I need my book. Um, that's at the time we were traveling with physical books. Now everything is digital. So I like to have one iPad and everything in there. But these are the first two books that really um, kind of gear me in the direction that we are, that we're, uh, that we are today. Well, I have, I have to ask, cause you mentioned it a little bit. So you guys met in the industry. You've had not only a successful business together, but a successful marriage. So how'd you guys meet? I was a, I was a swimsuit designer before I got involved in network marketing and um, we met at the, our leader at the time, our leader was having an in-home presentation and that's how we met uh, for the first time. 
and I was bringing guests in and he, and he was bringing guests in and that's how we got to come across each other's path. And, uh, and we just started to learn from each other. I was really good at, um, the relationship building, the product where Chris was the numbers, you know, he was so good with the numbers and obviously connecting with people too. So between the two of us, we would help each other. We weren't even part of the same team, but we would help each other, um, to, to build. And, uh, yeah, so we end up uh, being partners in life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, we just we, complimented yeah. each other and everything. This is what happened is we, we started working together and, and we found that individually we were both effective and efficient, but together we were a, a force to reckon with. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. It just, it just added to the, you know, the equation of, I don't know, the, the influence that we were uh, giving based on how we would feel from each, you know, we would feed each other off, uh, you know, based on certain things I would say, she would finish my sentence, or I would do the same thing. And uh, guests were, were, were attracted to that approach. And we didn't do it intentionally. It, it just kind of ended up being that way. And um, one thing led to another, and we just, just enjoy working together. And that's where everything kind of begun for us. Well, you, you've certainly built a great marriage as well as a great team. How, how many years are you guys married? Uh, we're looking at... Yeah, going on 15 years in May. Wow. Yeah. yeah. yeah Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank so you. Let's, let's come back to books for a minute, though, because we referenced a couple of great ones. So let me give you a very hypothetical situation. I know you guys are down in Florida and it's winter time, and, and you're snow burning it, I guess, um, like a lot of people are, certainly. Um, but... Let's just say that they pulled up at your house and they said, listen, we're going to take you to a beautiful deserted island. We're going to give you plenty of food, plenty of water, but you're limited in what you can bring. You're limited to three books each. And Tammy, why don't we start with you? What would the three books be in addition to what you've already mentioned? Well, there's one that uh, we read recently called The Path. This one, I think a lot of people come into network marketing and they, they really don't have a mission or a purpose in, in life and in business. And they just kind of jump in and not really knowing where they're going. And that, that book uh, by Lori Beth Jones, as I went through it, it re really uh, asks a lot of questions. It brings back your past and to try and figure out where you're coming from, what others expected of you and where you are today. and through all the questions, you actually find your mission statement and purpose. That one really helped us um, rebrand our, our name, Chris and Tammy, in the profession where we came out with uh, Commit to Transform. And this all came, if, if I hadn't have read that book, that name, that, this wouldn't have come together, this new branding uh, concept that we're doing, which we are going into podcasting moving forward. So... Um, that I highly recommend everybody reads this book um, in life, in business. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. Great. And, and, and say that again, commit to transform. Yes. Like that. So, yeah. So we've always been committed. No matter what we do, we, we're the type of people, we just give it everything we got. We learn something, we apply it. And then you grow from that experience. So commitment is something that we've been very strong with. And of course, transformation, you always have to evolve. If you're not growing, then you're going to be, you're going to get left behind. I mean, just look at what's happened in the last couple of years. Um, we've built our business on traveling, um, you know, going into whatever country, Chris and I can literally go into a country and, and launch it and uh, build out leadership because we've been doing this for so long we just close our eyes and do it um, and then all of a sudden this is all gone and everybody's at home so now Chris and I have to transition and transform ourselves through the virtual world so that that um, that's why these these uh, two concepts together are so important because when you're committed and you're willing to grow continuously um, getting to another level, you'll succeed in this industry. Yeah, and, and to add to, to this, the path, the reason why it's so important is that 
it has kind of woken up the, the sleeping giant within us. Uh, as Sammy stated, up to November 2019, to be specific, that was the last trip. And I believe I, we came back from Nigeria back to Canada. Yeah. And uh, make a long story short, we didn't anticipate that this would stop. But at the time, every two months, we would end up in a plane supporting one of our team globally as we were ex we've expanded like crazy. Yeah. And now that we're completely virtual, we need to tr transform. And the, and the commit to transform comes from our logo. See, we need to figure out what do we want. And we work with one of our millionaire in our team. He happens to live in Ghana, just a wonderful, brilliant, brilliant man. And he says, you know, I, I sent him a couple of ideas based on the things that we read in the book and, and so forth. And he says, Chris, you're so much more than that. I mean, I came from nothing and now I'm a millionaire and I own properties and businesses. And, and we came up with a logo that is deviated from the yin and yang. And then in between, you know, the yin and yang, you know, the way it's designed. Well, in there, you put also space for the C and the T. C for Chris, T for Tammy, which is in line with what Tammy says, commit to transform, which is the foundation of who we are and what we do. Chris, commit. Sammy, transform, commit to transform. And that's ended up also being a domain, commit to transform.com. So long story short is we've completely redefined ourselves based on what this book, and the reason we spent on some time on that, John, is because it's very important to, to adjust or versus react. And these, these kind of books can really help you uh, make the adjustments or help you make some decisions to give you some direction. Another book, uh, as you mentioned, three that I would really, really recommend, if that would be the case, is anything that has to do with leadership. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that one of the most recognized mentor when it comes to leadership is John C. Maxwell. Mm -hmm. I mean, brilliant guy. Tammy and I, we, we were invited to come to one of his weekend um, seminar discussion, and uh, it was expensive, but it was worth it. And, uh, but the fact here is uh, he talked a lot about the five levels of leadership, you know, that book that he wrote, which is interesting because several years prior to that, all our trainings and foundation was based on the five levels of leadership, you know, level one, your certain level of le leader, level two, you become a permission leader, and level three, four, five, five is like the pinnacle. And, and it's, this is the kind of information that anyone would need to be able not just to grow an organization, but sustain growth within an organization. Because we all know that when you start growing an organization, you know, people are people and they will be different personalities and conflicts and challenges. And, and if you have a good understanding of how to lead people, then you're in a much better position to give your team direction opposed to imploding by taking sides and making things worse. Right when when you're dealing with challenges, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Being a networker yourself, so that I I, I mean that would be the second book is um, uh, the five levels of leadership. And uh, Tammy, do you want to pick the third one because I I got plenty in my oh, head. Yeah. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. I I I must read that every single year, and then I realign myself again with 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 our vision and where we're going. And we map everything out. We know what we want. We know where we're going and we know we're going to get it again. You know, your belief grows as you start achieving small things. Mm -hmm. And then you start going for the bigger things. And I put a plane on my, um, on my vision board and, uh, Chris said, well, what, what do you want a plane for? He said, just so we can get in the get in our private plane and we can just fly over to Florida whenever we feel like it. We can just fly and pick up the grandkids and bring them here and just fly and go do a meeting here and there. It's like, let's do it, you know? And now we're working towards it. Exactly. It's funny because I've asked that question now, you guys are about the 60 something interview I've done. And Think and Grow Rich is the number one book of all time of everybody. Mm -hmm. So ironically, last year I was introduced to a gentleman, and this is a real name, I'm not being funny. His name is Ben Gay, Ben Gay III. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and, he, and like, yeah, he'd say, I don't get any royalties for the, you know, that ointment, you know, but, oh, uh, but the last two years of his life, not of his life, he's still alive, but the last two years of Dr. Hill's life, 
He was actually brought into the company that Ben was the president of, Holiday Magic. This was back in the late 1960s. So I said, okay, you spent two years going to lunch with Dr. Hill, being his friend, going to barbecues with him, you know, hanging out with him as a, as a human being, right? And I said, what three things, if you had to summarize? And he said, integrity, focus, and action. Those three mm -hmm. things were the th three things above all else that Dr. Hill preached to him, you know? So we see where our industry's at. The people who read these things wind up super successful like you both have been and, and uh, the people who haven't read them need to read them most importantly. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit different here on the industry. Obviously you guys have started a lot of people who've become successful and you started people I'm sure, you know, like yours truly that haven't been as successful as you would have liked them to be or they thought that they should have been for a variety of reasons. So let's talk about the people who've had the success that they've wanted, that you've wanted for them. What's your best methodology to get them started to get them off of that, you know, that flying start where they gain that confidence and okay, I know Chris and Tammy can do this. They told me I can do it. They've showed me the way, they've showed me the tools, they've showed me the systems, they've done the calls. Now I'm comfortable doing it. How do you get them there? That's a really good question. If I may, if you want me to start, Tammy, is that okay? Yeah, you can go ahead. Um, you know, it's, it's all about planning, doing, and reviewing all the time. And the very first thing that I would make sure that the brand new person understands is what is your core rank? What is that first rank? Not necessarily the easiest rank, but the most significant rank, which is not too difficult to reach that you could consider as your core rank, where if duplicated, you can go all the way to the top, whatever competition plan, you're dealing, whatever company you're dealing with. That would be the very first thing is for them to understand that. And through the process of understanding, understanding this is we make sure that people go through what we call a new associate orientation, right? What are the steps? What are the things that they should be aware of? We call it a success cycle, you know, the basic activities of uh, making your list, prospecting, inviting, or let me, you know, inviting your list, prospecting, inviting, following up, third party credibility, and getting someone started. But the very first thing, and again, I know that a lot of people tend to think like consumers and consumers think to, well, how much, you know, how much are my products and how much can I sell them? And, and often this is how people start. And I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong because millionaires have been created by building a huge customer base. And I won't debate that because there's been millionaires that went on the business aspect. The other one did it on the customer base. But from my point of view, if you want to build a solid business, it's never about the product, but it's about the vision. It's about the better understanding of what this lifestyle can bring you and what we are as we are networkers and we create networks that share information among each other, which is the way of the future, by the way, especially today with the way things are going. Everything is virtual and so forth. So the fact here is share the big picture, understanding the possibilities, and then go back all the way down to the basic foundation of what is your core rank. Teach that core rank. What are the steps that they need to, 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 to repeat and duplicate within their organization. And if they do that, I, I, and I'm talking from experience, if they do that, they will. They can go all the way to the top rank of their company. Tammy, mm -hmm. feel free to add whatever you feel. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Having that, that solid foundation uh, planned out. And I, I like to sit down and, and ask people, what are they willing? Uh, why are, first of all, why are they here? Because I want to know what, why they're, why they're doing it. Um, what, what do they want out of it? That's the big thing. What do they want for themselves? Because a lot of people assume people want the same thing and they don't. You know, might want to get super fast track and they're not ready to go on that super fast track run. So I think really understanding where people are at and their foundation part, fundamental part of doing that. And, and then I work with them at that level and moving them up in, in their belief and their confidence through the process. Mm -hmm. But we do have a focus on our core, uh, core rank um, so that everybody knows exactly what they need to do to get to the first step, to get to the second step. We actually have a five-step process. And if they can do that, they can certainly teach it. And it's not a difficult process. So it's mm -hmm. the, the, key, the key is simplicity, Chris. I mean, that's really what we've we've built with a simple uh, formula to get to a core rank. And when you understand that in your company and you just duplicate that, you're gonna, you're gonna have a ton of people doing the little things which makes the big things over time.
And, and keep in mind, John, that, you know, I, 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 I know I speak to the choir here. Doing this is extremely important, but there's also there needs to be a support system. Yes. And if there's no support system, people will fall off. And, and that's something that's very important. And, um, you know, Tammy and I had some experience in working with the leaders where they tend to create um, like a field around themselves in fear of people stealing their downlines and stealing their prospects and things like this. And, um, you know, like Jim Rohn says, you know, sometimes the birds will come in and will turn on the steel, steal your seeds and run away and you chase the birds, you leave the field. Uh, the fact here is focus on the activities, but it's it's very important that people don't feel constrained and locked in into a tiny little group that has no influence to be able to learn from elsewhere in fear that maybe someone may want to go and jump into this other deal. It's a possibility. But what I found is people don't want to leave. They want to stick around because of the culture that we've created. comes back down to my point is you need that support system that people feel safe and they have questions, concerns, issues, whatever may be coming around. There's a support system that they can plug into and get immediate information. Even if you're not available, other members of the team may turn around and, uh, you know, while you're sleeping, someone else is up, depending on where you do business. And the answer could be there very quickly by having, uh, for example, like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or Telegram, whatever it is that you use. Uh, you need a support system to keep people together, engage and inform and uh, constantly fed with positive reinforcement. So all of this is over and above. The basic foundation is understanding your core rank. So I know I went a little longer than when you asked, but I just felt it was kind of important to give a better context so people Absolutely. understand. Absolutely. I, th I think what you're describing, too, is, you know, you create a community of success where they never feel alone, most importantly. Yes. Oh, that's critical. That is We're so critical. United. We're united by a mission, right? And uh, everybody is on the same page and we, we've, we're, we're a global entity. So we, we bring everybody together and they love it. They love learning from each other. And uh, it's, it's a safe environment mm -hmm. for everybody to evolve and grow. And you can see the book, maybe Chris, you can just grab the book if you have it handy. We wrote a book uh, called Freedom Formula, Breaking the Cycle of Poverty. Um, through network marketing, and this is all based on our experiences in building, but a lot of the things that we're talking about is actually in the book. We talk about our um, how to build a solid foundation. That is key. You know, bringing people into the, this business is, is the easy part, e even though some people might find it difficult. It's, it's keeping them in and moving them along to, uh, by the time they start building their belief that they can actually do it and help others, um, that's what it takes. And so we've done a lot of things um, in the last 25 years to build that solid foundation. Uh, they're, they're literally our family. Everywhere we go, we all know all of our doors are open for our family. And that's what people are looking for. They're looking for that community. People who genuinely care about people's uh, growth and success. In well, fact, that book is a summary of a lot of books that we've read. So you may find a lot of gold nuggets in there and you can skip a lot of reading just by picking that up. And if you, if that's okay, John, I can tell yeah, people where they can get it. Absolutely. Hold the book up again, if you would, Chris, cause, cause, uh, so they can see it as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah, just so want to go to freedom formula one.com. Yeah. O N E.com. Yeah. Freedom formula is the name of the book. And it's interesting because the, the name came after we finished it. You know, as we were writing the book, you know, you, you have all these ideas and you put them all together. And then, you know what? That's the formula to freedom, freedom formula. So freedom formula, uh, O-N-E, so freedom formula one. And the reason why is because someone wanted 8,000 pounds for the freedomformula.com. It says, mm, you know what? No, I don't think we need to. So at this point, we just got freedom formula, O-N-E, freedom formula one.com. And it's just a domain that points right to where it's located on Amazon. And uh, it's very cheap. It's around seven, eight bucks or something like that. And it's a great read. And I think that it can really give you all the, 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 the mechanics and the steps and the things that we're talking about that got us to our pinnacle, reach our pinnacle rank with our company. And, and we really hope, and it's pretty, it's, it's generic. So there's no specification in there uh, about what, where we do and what we do, uh, but how we go about doing it. And I think it'll be very helpful.
Great, great. Well, looking forward to re reading it and kind of kind of a perfect segue for my next question. So let me kind of set this up for you both. You know what we're talking about community and, and you know, getting people started and all of the, you know, the, you know, whether it's a Facebook group or a WhatsApp group or, a, you know, whatever group, uh, there's all these different, you know, groups that people are in, you know, some are product driven, some are business driven, some are both, some are, are even geographical, right? I'm sure you guys, uh, you know, like myself, you've got groups that are in different markets where they've got their own, own, own group. And I think these last two years, have been really interesting in a lot of ways. And that's not only how our industry has morphed into more technology and truly, you know, be at home business, right? We always said we were at home. And then we said, now come down Tuesday night to the Holiday Inn so I can show you the business. And the person scratched their head and said, well, I thought you said you worked from home, right? So now we really do work from home. Over that's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I was laughing about that with, with somebody I interviewed last week. I said, yeah, yeah, we're home base. Come down to the Holiday Inn and we'll talk, tell you about the business, right? But uh, of course, that's changed so much. But along those lines, guys, a lot of people that either weren't interested in our industry, didn't matter the company, didn't matter the product, didn't matter the brand, they just had no interest whatsoever, have now opened their eyes to, hey, you know what? Maybe everything was going along really honky dory for me. And all of a sudden, you know, we know what happened the last couple of years. So let me set this up for you. Let's just say that this afternoon, that there's a 25 year old, doesn't matter, you know, boy or girl, doesn't really matter, uh, down the street from you. Let's just say it's a boy, just an easy example. And he and his dad, they're taking a walk. His dad's about 60 and um, they're having a conversation. And the 25 year old, you know, went to college, got a good education, got good grades, worked hard, graduated on time, you know, did all the stuff that you want, you know, our kids to do, right? And, um, all of a sudden, you know, starts his business career, things going along well, all of a sudden, boom, we know what happens. And he loses his job because maybe he was the last person hired. Maybe the company doesn't exist anymore. Maybe whatever the circumstance is caused by the pandemic, no fault of his own. And all of a sudden he had moved out, right? Every parent's dream moved out independent. Well, he's back living in his spare bedroom where he grew up. And dad's about 60 now. And dad was in a situation where he was upper level management had almost done well, saved money, was getting ready to, you know, learn how to hit more golf balls or catch more fish or whatever. And all of a sudden we know what happened on his end. And they're walking down the street this afternoon. They said, hey, you know, Christian and Tammy, they're in that network marketing stuff and they've been successful. Why don't we go knock on their door and see if they give us a little bit of time? So they do that. And you're nice people. You say, hey, yeah, come on in. You offer them a, you know, a bottle of water or whatever. And you sit them down in the living room and they say, okay, guys, tell us about network marketing as a business. Why should we get in it now? No particular order. The 25-year-old, the 60-year-old, or the 60-year-old, the 25-year-old. Christian, why don't you start? What do you tell them? Well, I mean, there's two different environment, right? So, and this is how my brain works is I tend to establish clarity and put all the cards on the table and then I come up with some answers. And we're, we're dealing with a gentleman in his sixties or early or mid sixties. Um, he has wisdom. I mean, I don't know how much he's accomplished in his life, but it's definitely a social environment, a certain credibility where a 25 year old um, has a certain amount of credibility, but it's obviously different from his father. And, uh, and also, he doesn't have the same credibility within his social environment because he doesn't have as many years as his father has, who is in his 60s. So, um, but generally, what are they both looking for? So, we live in an environment today what is it's, it's very toxic. So, my approach when they knock on my door says, you know, I'd like to, to get another stream of income. Um, I would start what we talked about earlier is finding out what, what do they desire, what's their goal, what's important to them, what matters to them. And based on that information, which applies to both of them, um, I would basically get them to understand that what we, what we are is we are a distribution network. And it happens that we are distributing some supplements that are dealing with a very common problem when it comes to our immune system. And it's very, very credible within the science community and even the medical community. But it also brings an interesting things. And, and again, all respect meant, you know, to, to the pharmaceuticals and, and so forth and the, and the big companies. But what happens is that what we do is we provide the average person 
the opportunity to be compensated for sharing disinformation. And if they're interested to consume or to be part of the culture of this business venture, then you get compensated not only from your effort, but from their efforts. And that's kind of my approach. That would be kind of generic. I wouldn't be specific. And based on their response, you know, our conversation will always vary from person to person based on how they absorb the information, what comes out from that. And, but generally, there will be two aspects. is understanding what we have to establish the credibility and the value to, we bring to the inline consumer. But in the same time, I would share the big picture and the vision as to what they can get and getting involved in something like this. And, I, and depending on the person, for example, a CEO that might have been, you know, uh, six, seven figure. I, I mean, it's hard to say where people are, but anywhere between six to seven figure in between anywhere, somewhere there. Uh, obviously, if someone is accustomed to uh, more, more money. So I know how to get there because we've done it. So I would have an approach that would be in line to get there and go all the way down to what we shared earlier. Well, these are the steps. This is the core rank. And if this is repeated and this is duplicated, then this is the amounts that we're looking at um, based on you know, whatever time frame that we're looking at here. If I'm dealing with a younger person, it's really kind of the same. It's, it's the same information, but the approach for a gentleman in his 60s would be his social environment because there's probably massive amount of people they know. Where a 25 year old, especially today with the social media environment, which they tend to be born with a phone, a cell phone on their hip, um, you know, it, it, they're kind of breed into all of that. So this is what I would certainly focus on, on you know, for him to create his awareness, the awareness of his social environment of what he's all about. I don't know if that kind of answers the question or if sure. I'm in line with that. Sure. Tammy, your thoughts? Yeah, we, we work the same way. So every time Chris talks, I mean, this is, that's why we work so well together is we do the same things. Yeah. Um, I like to keep everything simple. And um, yeah, so I, I just, again, find out what, what they're looking for and have them look at some information. We have a link and we get them to look at it. And uh, from there, based on what they see, what questions they ask, that we know where we're going to guide them the next step. So it's just uh, moving people forward and uh, everybody's open today. It's, it's it, more than ever. And the, the most important thing that I could share with all of you is just open your heart to people and listen to them and stop mm. making it about your agenda and make it about where they're at and, and find a solution with them to make a decision for them to have a better life, whatever it is they're looking for. And when you do that, people are so much more open. I think the problem is people just are so hungry and they're, they're like hound dogs, you know, just, just wanting to, to chase everybody because they're so hungry. Stop being hungry and start making a difference in people's lives. Um, open up their hearts because they do want to share their story and they're hurting. And I always say that we always say this to our team, people are staying awake at night, silently suffering or somebody in their family member silently suffering. So if you, if you find the solution, as we always say, then people are open to grab onto it and at least have a look at it. Be curious enough to have a look at it. Right. Well, they're both, both all great answers and you're absolutely right. There's so many people hurting right now, but what that's caused, right? Sometimes that, that pain makes people do things that maybe they wouldn't have. And they, all of a sudden they say, well, you know, because I was a whatever, or I have this education or I have this or that, you know, network marketing is something, you know, that they think is either beneath them or whatever. And all of a sudden now they're finding more and more people that are coming and saying, hey, let, let me at least know what I'm saying no to, <laughs> right? Which, you know, the last two years ago wasn't that way, but it certainly is that way now. So let me ask you the 800 pound gorilla question that I have to ask, because I don't know how it's worked out this way. I have, I've interviewed male business partners who, you know, actually I met you guys through, 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 through Joe Garcia and Dan, and I've interviewed people in the industry together, but I've never interviewed a married couple together. I don't know how I've missed that one yet. So let me ask the 800 pound gorilla story or question rather, how do you guys 
set your boundaries in your business, right? With, you know, being married, all the other things that come with that, having a family, all the other, other, you know, scenarios in the business, how do you set the boundaries? Cause we have a lot of married couples, I'm sure that listen and say, you know, mama does this, papa does this, but you know, if papa does what mama does, he gets in trouble or vice versa, maybe. And uh, Tammy, I'm going to start with you because I imagine that you probably set some, some pretty strong boundaries, but uh, I'll let you answer for yourself. Yeah, we, we both have really strong personalities. So we're the type of people, we're just going to sometimes agree to disagree and it works for us. You know, he, he'll say, you know what, Tammy, I'm, I'm not on the same page as you right now. And I'm going, that's fine. I might have to explain a little bit deeper on my logic of why I'm bringing this concept or idea and we'll, we'll discuss it. Um, we both have our own offices and we, we both know what to do. So we're kind of not in each other's way at all. We come together, we know that we have our um, trainings, either both of us will do it together, we'll, we'll um, do it separate. Um, so we're both independent, but we're also, we work really well together. So um, yeah, I mean, we both know what we're doing. So it, it, I guess it makes it easier. Was it always like that? No, I mean, as you get, as you know person, you know, as you get to know them, um, you got to find out what you're really good at and what you're really good at and where should this person spend their focus and where should that person spend their focus and figure out how you can leverage each other's uh, skills. And uh, yeah, that's what we've, we've managed to do that over time. Are we perfect? No, we're like any other couple out there and uh, we get tired too. Friday night is date night. So you can see the smile on our face because we work really hard and, and we look forward to after this session, it's like, where are we going to go? You know, we're just going to go out and have a little bit of fun and, and, um, you know, focus on us rather than business phones, always on the side, no texting. No, we got our rule five o'clock. That's it. And then, um, till Saturday morning. So that's been, that's worked really, really well for us. So pick a date night where you're just focusing on yourselves and your dreams and your goals and your vision together. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tammy's, you know, she said something that's really important here is, um, and I really like that in the book of Stephen Covey is uh, the seven habits of highly effective people is that we're both very independent, but we're also interdependent. And we realize it's kind of when we started to call that when we're together, we're, we're like a force to reckon with, right? Uh, and, and that's true of the case, but independently, we are, like she's, like Tammy said, we, we know exactly what we have to do. You know, uh, Tammy works with a certain group of leadership. I work with the, the group of leadership and we both do events together. And sometimes, so we, we complement each other. It's like we're, we're an extension of each other so we can do more work. And I have my office. She has her office. As you can see, she's in her office. She's on the other side of the room. I'm in my office here. And, and she's absolutely correct. Um, and my wife is amazing in instigating ideas where I tend to be executor. You know, I will execute. And my wife too, is, but, she, but she'll come up with the original idea and sometime I might be uh, resistant, right? And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, <that's> true. <laughs> right? I, I'll be resistant. And, uh, but then, you know, we start the process and I start, I, you know, you know what? That's brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, and sometimes say, we, you go do it, you go do it. I'll just watch you go do it. And then yeah. I get some success out of it and it goes, Oh my gosh, that was a good idea. Yeah. So, you know, you just got to go out and try things. I'm the person that's going to go out and try a lot of new things because people like something new, you know, they don't want the same old, same old, there might be some basics, but, um, but people like new stuff. And then Chris will get involved and, yeah. and we end up creating something big out of it. Yeah, I'm very systematic and I like yeah. systems that have been well oiled, that turns nicely, that functions, that work. And you just keep using that same cookie, you know, machine that does the same thing. But it's correct. I mean, now that we're in a new era, you know, for the past two years, I mean, a lot of things have to be adjusted, right? Like before, we just get a phone call and we meet at a coffee shop. Well, it's not as easy, you know, as, as easy as it used to be. So now everything is on Zoom. And so everything has been converted towards the technology. 
but yeah, it, and and the most important thing, you know, for listeners is it's okay to uh, to, to agree to disagree, uh, and do it in a friendly way. So, you know, you don't have to kiss and make up after because it went really bad. Um, you know, it's just it's just accept that okay, right now it's it's we're not on the same page, but you know what? Often we end up being on the same page as we start coming across situation. And things get adjusted along the way. But the, the thing is to agree to disagree and still move along with the same goal. Well, obviously, it's worked very well. It's almost like the equation of one plus one equals three, right? The, yeah. the, the, the third thing becoming the, the, the element of a tremendously successful business when you take your skills, your skills, add them together, and all of a sudden, boom, you got this magical business that's growing all over the world, which is great. So uh, my, my name is John Solider. The name of the show is leavingnothingtochance.com. It airs live every Tuesday on Spotify, on iTunes, and a number of other podcast networks around the world. Uh, you can always go to leavingnothingtochance.com. By the way, all these shows are archived, and also they're actually written out. So you've actually got, got a, a written example. Uh, of everything that you heard here. So some of the great notes that, that Christian and Tammy have shared about building a business, they're going to be there. Download them, print them, work with them, take your highlighter, make notes to have for yourself because you can learn a tremendous amount from what you just heard here. Uh, also, our books are available, uh, Leave Nothing to Chance, which we wrote last year. And prior to that, we wrote a book called Moving Up 2020, and they're available on Amazon in English and also in Spanish. Now, back to you guys for the last word. We're living in interesting times. We've talked about that a little bit today. Looking forward, what's the future look like for you guys? Sure. Uh, it's really interesting because we're the, the work is still in progress. Um, in fact, in 2022, it's when um, we really kind of pierced through direction that we were, we kept asking yourself, okay, where, what direction should we take? And the future is, is still, we're still going to be in touch with our organization worldwide, but this time we created an environment where it's, it's a logical home or a, a virtual home, let me rephrase that, where the entire organization can actually plug into to get the same kind of attention that we used to when we were traveling, as I mentioned earlier, every two months into their market. And I'm not saying that we're not going to travel again because I'm sure eventually things will open up. You know, I don't know when that's going to happen, but it's 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 everything is is virtual. And even though we were virtual before, it was not as utilized as it is as it is now. And when it comes to um, uh, uh, financial goals, you know, Tammy talked about owning a plane. And for me, I had, to, I had to work on that a little bit, but the idea is kind of growing in me. And I don't see anything wrong with that, but I see yourself being completely free to travel, you know, from markets to markets in our own terms, instead of relying on Delta airline or Air Canada or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and, and there's many other aspects. I don't want to take all the space. I want to give my wife a chance to share. But for me, the big deal is our branding our, our virtual home where people can learn, they can connect with us, they can set appointment through the schedule that's all virtually already organized. And, and, and we've created funnels so people can turn around and, and connect with us based on the level of interest on something that uh, we've done. We've hired uh, some virtual assistants. One is in Germany, the other one is in Philippines. And they're helping us with some of our marketing and promoting and things that, so we can do the things that we do best and that's be in front of people and share. So uh, this is kind of my take on where I see the future. In fact, the future is the present. It's just gonna grow from there. But our, our, our goal is always about impact. If we can impact uh, thousands of people's fam families around the world, then we've done our job in making, in making a difference for people. So freedom formula is the formula. And we just took it to another level of branding. And we just love what we do. I love to see transformation in people. That's what gets me up every single morning. And that keeps us going all will grow. And if it's happened for us, honestly, John, we always say that. If we can do it, you can do it. Chris and I are really, we're average people. If you ever sat down and hung out with us and didn't even know what we did for a living, 
you would just see that we're average people who were sick and tired of where we were in our lives and we made decisions to get us to where we wanted to go. And, and we just stayed focused. We committed ourselves to go into the top and, and keep on rising. And uh, along the path, we've helped thousands and thousands of people um, get what they want. So it's a lot of fun. Great. Well, I want to thank you both. This has been, been a prayer. Well, well, <laughs> and that's not the computer screwed up. That's me. I want to say a <laughs> privilege and an honor. And, and hey, a lot of great information here, folks. So once again, when you listen to these shows, take the time to listen to them and make your notes because Tammy and Christian can tell you this. They've been incredibly successful in the industry. And, and most of the people we interview have been incredibly successful in the industry. Every one of us have notebooks of other people's information. Well, once that you write it down, it's your information. It's yours, you own it. It's like going to college and learning how, how to do something, but here you're learning how to make income, make revenue and make changes in your life. So once again, Christian, Tammy, I wanna thank you both. I know it's date night. I know it's Friday that we're doing this interview. So I wanna thank you both. Hang on one second after I stop the recording, but uh, I wanna thank you both and, and wish you uh, nothing but the best and continued success and blessings in your careers and in your lives. Thank you for being invited, John. It was a pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Leave Nothing to Chance. If you want to know more about what it takes to succeed in the network marketing space, join us again next week for another amazing episode. For additional resources and to connect with John Solider, visit leavingnothingtochance.com. Don't forget to leave a review and we'll see you next time.